very best. Abraham intercedes for Sodom. <clears throat> with Abraham walking with them to see them on their way, the men set out from there and looked down towards Sodom. The Lord considered, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Now that is to become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth are, are to find blessing in him. Indeed, I have singled him out that he may direct his children and his household in the future to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord may put into effect for Abraham the blessing he made about him. So then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and they are still so great. Then I have to go down to see whether or not their outcry are so bad and they come down to me. I mean to find out. As a man turned and walked towards Sodom, Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you really sweep the way the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous people in the city. Would you really sweep away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous and the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you to do such a thing. Should not the judge of all the world do what is just? The Lord replied, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again, See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am only dust and ashes. What if they are less than five fifty righteous people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if there are forty people there? I refrain from doing it if I find forty there for the sake of forty. Then Abraham said, let my Lord not be angry if I go home. What if there are thirty people there? He said, I refrain from doing it if I find thirty there. Abraham said, See, I have presumed to talk with my Lord. What if there are no more than twenty? He said, I refrain from doing it for the sake of twenty. Please don't let, don't let my, don't let my Lord be angry if I spoke up this last time. What if then I found there for the sake of God? I will not destroy you. The Lord departed as soon as she had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned back home. If the Lord will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and if I return safely to my father's house, the Lord will be my God. And these stones which I set as a sacred pillar will be the Lord's house. Of all that he gives me, I will return to him without fail. Jacob's vow in the Old Testament, Jacob's vow. Jacob then made this vow. 
If God will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and I come back safely to my father's house, the Lord will be my God. This stone that I have set up as a sacred pillar will be the house of, of God. For of everything you give, you give me, I will return as a temple without faith. Longest vow in the Old Testament, Jacob's vow. Jacob made, it, made them this vow. If God will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and cross the way, the Lord will be my God. <coughs> and of <laughs> longest vow in the Old Testament, Jacob's vow. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making and give me food to eat and cross the way and I turn back to my father's house safely, the Lord will be my God. Of everything that you give to me, I will turn and turn back to you without pain. <laughs> The longest vow in the Old Testament, Jacob's vow. Jacob then made this vow. If the Lord will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and I come back safely to my father's house, the Lord will be my God. This stone that I have set up as a sacred pillar will be the house of God. Of everything you give me, I will return a tenth part to you without faith. This vows in the Old Testament, Jacob's vows. Jacob then made this vow. If God will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and I come back safely to my father's house, the Lord will be my God. This stone that I have set up as a sacred pillar will be the house of God. Of everything you give me, I will return to you a tenth part without fail. <coughs> the longest vows in the Old Testament, Jacob's vow. Jacob then made this vow. If the Lord will be with me and protect me in this journey I am making, and give me food to eat and clothes to wear, and I came back safely to my father's house, the Lord will be my God. This stone that I have set up as a sacred pillar will be the house of the Lord. Of everything you give me, I will return to you a tenth part without faith. The longest vow in the Old Testament, Jacob's vow. Jacob then made this vow. If the Lord will be with me and protect me on this journey I am making, giving me food to eat and clothes to wear, and I come back to my father's house, the Lord will be my God. This stone which I set up as a sacred pillar will be the house of God. Of everything you give me, I will turn a tenth part without fail. The finest speeches in the entire Old Testament. Speech of Judah. Judah then stepped up to him and said, I beg you, my Lord, let your servant appeal to my Lord, and do not become, become angry with your servant. For you, you are the equal of fellow. The Lord asked his servant, Have you a father or another brother? So we say to my Lord, We have an aged father and a younger brother, the child of his old age. This one school brother is dead, and since he is the only one by his mother who is left, his father is devoted to him. 
Then the Lord told his servant, Bring him down to me that I may see him. To reply to the Lord, The boy cannot leave his father. His father would die if he left. But you told your servant, Unless your youngest brother come down with you, you shall not see me again. When we return to your servant, my father will report the word of my Lord. Later, our father said, Go back and buy some food for us. So we reminded him, We cannot go down there. Only if our youngest brother is with us can we go. For we may not see the man if our youngest brother is not with us. Then your servant, my father, said, As you know, my wife bore me two sons. One, one of them, however, has gone away from me. And I say, he has been torn to pieces by wild beasts, since I have not seen him. If you take this one away from me too, and disaster befalls on him, you will send my white head in Sheol. So now, if the boy is not with us, when I go back to your servant, my father, whose life is is bound up is bound up he he will die as soon as he sees that the boy is missing and your servant will thus send your will send white hand of your father of your servant our father down to show in grief beside I your servant has granted the boy safety for my father by saying if I fail to bring back him to you father I will bear brain before you forever so now let me your servant remain in place of the boy as the slave of my lord and let the boy go back with his brothers for how could I go back to my father if the boy were not with me I could not bear to see the anguish that would overcome my father. On behalf of my teacher and my classmates, I'm going to share with you some stories which are found in the book of Genesis. Genesis is divided into two main parts, part A and part B. Part A, prehistory, from chapter 1 to chapter 11. Part B, the story of the ancestors of Israelites, from chapter 12 to chapter 15. Part A, the first story when God created the universe, the man and woman, in the beginning. The second story, the original sin, when Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden Eden. The third story, when Cain killed his young brother Abel. The fourth story, the ark of Noah and the great flood. The fifth story, the Tower of Babel. Part B, the first story, Abraham and Isaac's story. The second story, Jacob's story. The third story, Joseph's story. <clears throat> Stories of Abraham and Isaac The first story When God called Abraham In the land Haran The second story When Abraham moved from Haran To the promised land With his family The third story When three angels 
appeared in the house of Abraham and they brought good news that Sarah in her old age he will bear a son and whom they named Isaac. The last story, when Abraham was told by God to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Stories of Jacob. The first story, when the twin brothers were born, Esau and Jacob. The second story, when Jacob took the place or the position of his elder brother by giving him red soup. The third story, when Jacob deceived his elder brother by pretending to take his blessings. The last story, when Jacob came back in, in his homeland and during night, an angel appeared to him and they fought, and which led to him to change his name from, ja from Jacob to Israel. Stories of Joseph. The first story, Isaac with his beloved son, Joseph. The second story, when Joseph was sold by Egyptians is when Jacob and his family moved from the promised land and went to meet Joseph in Egypt and they embraced each other and Joseph forgave his brothers and they continued to love one another as we can see. <laughs> and this story will lead us to the second book of Exodus. In the book of Genesis, we read about Abraham intercedes for Sodom and the last of the five, the testing of Abraham when he sacrificed his son, he did not sacrifice, when he was almost to sacrifice his son Isaac. And here are the 15, the 10 small stories. Abraham and Sarai in Egypt. Abraham and Lot, his cousin, the four kings, Ben of Ishmael, Abraham's visitors, destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Moabites and Ammonites, Abraham and Gera, the bed. Prepare the donkey and firewood. We are going to worship God. Yes, I do. Place from a distance. You and the donkey remain here, 
while Isaac and I we are going over there to worship God. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, while himself carried the fire and the knife. As they two walked together. Father, here I am. The firewood is here and the and the fire is here. But then where's the lamp for burnt offering? Isaac, God to provide the lamp for the burnt offering. When they came to the place of which God had ordered him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood the wood on it. Next, he bound his son Isaac and put him on top of the altar. Thank you, Mother. 